when I had the opportunity to be trained and volunteer as a St. Vincent's rape crisis advocate in New York City, I jumped at the opportunity. I was already a mom, I was a martial artist, I was studying to be a movement analyst, and although I wouldn't have said it like this then, I can see now that I was doing my own healing from my own experiences. Now during that five years, I learned a couple things that blew my mind. First thing, men get sexually assaulted. What? That blew me away. I thought this was a woman's problem. And while we certainly bear the lion's share of the burden, this is a people problem. It is pervasive, it is insidious, and it is global. Statistically in the US, one in three women reported, one in seven men reported, Half of all transgender people will experience some form of sexual assault in their lifetime, with most of those occurrences happening before their 25th birthday. The second thing that I discovered was that sexual assault happens between people who already know each other. What? In my experience without exception, Statistically, it's 80%. I mean, that blew me away. Think about it. The people that we know, that's our coworkers, our classmates, our friends, our dates, our parents, our siblings. And if you expand what it is to know someone, to include that first interaction, that first conversation with another human being. Because if you're talking to someone, they're close enough to grab you. I say the statistics would go up from there. Now, maybe the silver lining is if 80% plus of all sexual attack happens between people who know each other, that there's some conversation that precedes the attack, then that means that potentially the attack could be avoided because we know the person. And I got really interested in that space. Like, wow, what if we could impact that space? Because while not all conversations lead to an attack, but most attacks are preceded by a conversation, how do we tell the ones that will from the ones that won't? Now, our current solution to this problem, this is self-defense. Now, if you imagine yourself doing self-defense, what are you doing? You're fighting. Isn't it already too late if you're fighting? There's a multi-billion dollar industry that is self-defense, that is teaching us that we need to be afraid of the bad people out there, the perpetrators. We, the good people, the victims, we need to protect ourselves. So go ahead, carry pepper spray. And that's all fine and dandy until in a moment of panic, you go to pull it out of your purse and you squirt yourself in the eye. Or they grab it from you and they squirt you. Okay, 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 so weapons may be not a good idea. I know. Go on YouTube and research some videos, particularly the one where you teaches you how to stick your fingers deep into somebody's eye sockets as you smash their head against your knee with your free hand, you grab them by the testicles, sorry guys, and squeeze as hard as you can until their eyes pop and they're begging you to call the police. Now, forgive me, I know that's graphic, but that's the reality of it. Are you prepared to do that? I'm a six degree black belt. I'm a former women's world karate knockdown champion and I don't want to do that. I have an idea. I have an idea. 
What if we go at this with an entirely new approach? What if we what if we go, we go at it in this conversation, like get into that conversational space? Again, how do we tell the ones that are going to go bad from the ones that aren't? Well, it's simple. It will take practice, but it's simple. You say no. You set a boundary. You find something to say no to and see what they do. Because have you ever, ha ever had that experience where everything was really great until you said no to the person and then it was like Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde? You find out a lot about someone when you say no. Okay, so that's it, just say no. Off you go. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> haven't we tried this before, this just say no thing? I don't think it went very well. Why not? Well, you might already be thinking to yourself, but I'm not always comfortable saying no to anyone, any time, any place, in any situation. I've yet to make anyone, meet anyone who is. So we first have to confront that. We're terrible at saying no. And we're not so great at hearing it. Have you noticed that? It could be the culture that we got raised in. Don't take no for an answer. Persist in the face of obstacles. Ask forgiveness, not permission. And then on the other side of it, you know, don't rock the boat, be nice, be good, be a lady. Don't play too hard to get. I mean, it's really no wonder that we're in this predicament. Now, you may not be confident or comfortable saying no directly. And with good reason. Like you're afraid that it's going to make things worse or you're going to be thought rude or racist or sexist or you're going to hurt their feelings. Or how about you want something and you're afraid if you say no to them, well, they'll say no to you. Or how about it's just easier to say yes. I'll deal with it later. Now, there is something that you say when you're not comfortable saying no directly. You might say, I'll think about it. I don't know. Let me sleep on it. I need to always sleep on these things. I'll check my calendar. Or you give them almost your accurate phone number. <laughs> but when you do that, don't you know that you're saying no? You do, don't you? Consider they know it too. And whatever that no is for you, keep saying that. Because someone who doesn't get your no maybe isn't going to respect and honor your boundaries and maybe you don't want to trust them. But that's going to be up to you. But you're going to at least notice it. Wow, this person doesn't get my no. And then you'll take whatever action is appropriate for you. Now, on the other side of it, this not getting no, not hearing it, it's because we want something and we don't care how we get it, maybe or we feel entitled, or we think we know better for them. So here's what I want to leave you with. Ask yourself the question, because this will take practice. As you go through life, ask yourself the question. Am I saying no right now? And is the person honoring and respecting my no? Also ask yourself the question, am I hearing no? Is this person saying no right now? 
And then am I honoring and respecting that? No. And then I will leave you with the words of the mystic, the Sufi mystic poet Rumi. Out beyond ideas of right doing and wrong doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. Thank you. Thank you.